Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Chappell. I am a pastor in Roswell, Georgia, just north of Atlanta, at a church called Northbrook United Methodist Church. Uh, I'm also the son of one of the pastors at Brentwood United Methodist Church. Couldn't tell you who. Um, Herschel told me uh, that you would be thinking and meditating and talking about the Beatitudes. And uh, I was thinking about the Beatitudes, which is the intro to the Sermon on the Mount. I love the Sermon on the Mount. I love the intro of who is blessed, uh, counter to who we would normally think is blessed, and then throughout the Sermon on the Mount, there are these things that we think, and Jesus turns them uh, on their head to say, you've actually, you've heard it this way, but actually I'm telling you a different thing. And Jesus in these, in the whole Sermon on the Mount is, is really pushing us a little bit out of our comfort zone, or a lot of bit out of our comfort zone. One of my favorite authors uh, is a guy named Pete Rollins. Um, he's from the UK, and he wrote a book uh, called The Orthodox Heretic. Now, when I was in youth ministry for five years, uh, it was all, I was always trying to figure out what to give our seniors that were graduating, and a lot of the times I gave them books, and I know that that book, like when I was a senior in high school and went to college, that book sat on the shelf for a long time. I tried to search for something that was short that um, could speak to them on a pretty deep level and pretty quickly. And Pete Rollins' book, The Orthodox Heretic, was one of those books. It's a book filled with kind of retellings of parables that Jesus, uh, that he puts Jesus into. And so he, he looks at all the parables in Matthew and Luke and the Gospels. He looks at the Beatitudes. He looks at the Sermon on the Mount. And he thinks, uh, Pete Rollins has thought of all these different stories, maybe modern retellings, uh, that point to the truths of these Gospels. And so one of these stories Pete is telling, uh, he retells part of the Sermon on the Mount, part of various parts of the Gospels. And he tells a story about Jesus going into a village and, and sharing this message. And of course, in typical fashion, there are crowds everywhere. And for the people out in the sticks, they can't hear. You know, there's so many people and there's crowds and Jesus can only project so much. So uh, there's people who can't hear very well. Uh, kind of reminds me of Monty Python's Life of Brian a little bit. The people who can't hear, who are trying and straining and probably hear something a little bit off. But there's this one group of people and they, the one thing they hear from Jesus is the part about if, if someone uh, hits you on one cheek, show them the other. And if somebody needs a tunic get, or needs something, give them the tunic off your back. And if somebody asks you to go one mile, go a second mile. Now, the one part they hear of that is the, the extra mile. Uh, they hear Jesus say, if, if, a, if a Roman soldier makes you carry his stuff one mile, carry it a second mile. And uh, so, so this, these people go back to their town and they tell everybody what Jesus told them. It, it's it's the, the story of the second mile. He, they, they tell the whole town that Jesus has told everybody, go uh, the second mile. If a, if, if a Roman soldier tells you to go one, go a second. And so this town becomes well known for going the second mile. So, and they start to develop relationships with these Roman soldiers. And so they happily carry it a second mile uh, over and over again. And so in the not too distant future, Jesus enters this town of these people who go the second mile. And the people are so excited to have Jesus there, and they run to Jesus, and the original people who had heard what Jesus had said, they, they go to Jesus and they say, Jesus, we, teacher, we, we heard what you said so long ago about going the extra mile, and look at us, we now take every, we, we now partner with the Roman soldiers and we take their stuff a second mile, we, we go a second mile. And thinking, they, they tell Jesus this thinking that he's going to say, great, you did, you did a good job. But that's not what Jesus says. Jesus says to them, great, you carry, it, you carry it two miles, now carry it a third mile. See, the point of so much of the Sermon on the Mount, the point of the Beatitudes, the point of uh, the gospel, one of the points of the gospel is, is that there isn't a limit to grace. There isn't a limit to love. There isn't a certain amount I have to meet. There isn't a standard that I have to, to be up to. There is always learning there is always a deeper love and a deeper grace and there is always an extra mile the point of christianity the point of of how we live is not 
to meet this criteria. It's once we meet a goal to continue on to the next goal. Once we love this much, love a little bit more and a little bit more to go not one or two miles, but the third mile. But once we reach that third mile to go the fourth and to go the fifth, that's the point. It's not to meet some criteria. It is to continue to grow in love and grace. That's what Wesley called sanctifying grace. It's the continuing to strive towards perfection and love, to continue to grow in and through Jesus. And so as you think about the Beatitudes, as you think about the Sermon on the Mount, as you're continuing to grow in Jesus, I want, uh, my prayer is for you that you would continue to know that Jesus loves us more and more and more into grace. And he asks us to do the same for those around us. So don't just go the second mile, go the third mile and then go the fourth and then go the fifth. Never stop growing in that grace and in that love. Let us pray. Gracious God, I pray that you would lead us, that you would guide us to a greater understanding of your love and grace. And when we think (laughs) we've reached that precipice to push us a little bit farther, to continue to grow us and mold us, may we never stop being learners and growers in grace. In Jesus' name, amen.